in today's show. I am here live on YouTube to answer your questions. Michael Bolton, he is lurking somewhere in the background, I think. Michael. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. <clears throat> Here we are, ready to get to your questions that you guys have got. You're dropping them in the chats. Um, well, not the chats, because there's only one of them. You're dropping them in the chat. Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's have a look. Raman Mangat says, do I drop Devontae Graham for Ayo Desunmu? Devontae Graham, I think we sort of know where he is, right? He is providing bad field goal percentage, actually subpar assists. He scores okay, hits some threes. Dasunmu is playing really well at the moment, and we know Lonzo's out for, let's just say, six to eight weeks. That's our expectation of Lonzo, that we're, we're looking at him probably, you know, start of March, mid-March to return. Um, Dasunmu is shooting well above his head. He's not going to be able to continue that. I don't mind dropping Graham, who honestly, when you look at your roster, if he is the worst player on your roster, then you can drop him to try this Dasunmu. Dasunmu might not work out. He might come back and shoot 40% and play 28 minutes because Caruso and Kobe White take the bulk of those minutes and then Levine returns. But I don't care about losing Devontae Graham in that scenario because other players will come up that if Dasunmu isn't working out, maybe I can re-add Graham. Maybe I can add somebody else. Maybe I can add the next guy. It doesn't matter if Devontae is your worst player. You drop him. You try Dasunmu. You see where it goes. Dasunmu is playing well. This literally might be the best stretch that he has though. What we've already seen without Levine, without, Le without ball and shooting 70%. Yeah, those things are probably not all going to continue. Well, we know they're not because Levine is going to return and the shooting will, will drop down. But dropping a Devontae Graham doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, Michael Chang says, what to do with Scotty Barnyard? Who I assume you mean Barnes, but that's a terrible nickname, but shout out to you for trying. What do you do with Scotty Barnes? You just hold him. Like, I know he's been playing poorly. If you don't have him, you try to buy low on Scotland. If you do have him, you can't really do much. Maybe you find the Scotty Barnes believer, the one who thinks that he is the rookie of the year still and is you know, here telling you that it's only a matter of time before he turns in top 30 value. If that happens, if there's someone out there who thinks that, then yeah, by all means, you trade him away for a top 50 player. I don't think anyone's going to be giving you a top 50 player on the back of how poor his recent performances have been. But if there is that delusional believer out there who still thinks that he is the truth, the light, the way, the everything for this team and for fantasy value and all that stuff, because there might be some of those people still out there, that's where you try to do a trade, but it's really going to be tough to, um, to pull that off, I, I would suggest. Justin Hill, what's Cam Reddish's long-term value? Well, we don't really know, do we? Because he hasn't played yet for the Knicks. But as I said, when he was traded, look, Cam Reddish is not a good fantasy player in general. He's a very subpar shooter. And where does he get 27 minutes on this Knicks roster? Because remember, he comes into the Knicks roster replacing literally nobody. So you've got to carve out 30 minutes there by taking away the 15 minutes Quentin Grimes plays. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, some of Fournier's minutes, some of Barrett's minutes, some of Quickly's minutes, some of Burks's minutes, some of Kemba's minutes. I don't really see the pathway for Reddish to be playing 30 a night when he's not that good. He's not significantly better. He might be better than marginally than some of those guys, but he's not significantly better. I just don't think he's going to come in and play 30 minutes straight off. I wouldn't be bothering with him, especially now that we don't even know when he's coming back from this injury. We, we just don't know when that's going to happen. Okay. What is Levert's rest of season outlook? Should I sell high now that Brogdon is back? I would not be looking at Brogdon as a lock to be uh, playing the rest of the season. There's too many injury concerns with his Achilles. Can you sell high on Levert? Sure. The guy's averaging like 23 points a night over the last month. He's getting good assists. I would be more inclined just to ride it out with the expectation that there is a chance that Brogdon gets hurt again or this Achilles thing flares up or they just say, this is too much of an issue. We're going nowhere this season. Go and get prolonged period of rest. Have whatever you need have done to this Achilles and Levert runs things the rest of the way. Again, it's all about what value you could get back in a trade for Levert, but I would be inclined to probably just roll with it. Andre Gomez, what's your favorite food? 
Um, I don't know how to answer that. I was having this discussion the other day with my partner about you know, the foods that you would always want to eat. And I think if I just had one choice, so like, what do you want to have? And you can have it every day. It's probably pizza. But I love lots of different foods. You know, I, I love Singapore noodles. I love having Tom Yum soup. I love pho. I love ramen. I love burritos. I love um, smoked brisket. I love lots of different things. Hunter or coffee, rest of season in points. Sverga germ. Okay, well, I don't know your points structure. And that is going to be the answer to everybody who, unless you say default you know, points league. I would suggest in a points league that we're looking at probably Hunter because of his ability to score more than coffee. But I do reckon that both of those guys are going to be pretty, pretty close to each each other the problem we're going to have with coffee is canard's back now batum's going to return um you're probably maybe sometimes perhaps potentially going to have paul george playing whereas hunter's just got bogdanovich to come back so i, I probably would take um hunter there mama yama what's my predicted paces center rotation a minute shakeout for the next week or so well we, we don't know about um demantis sabonis here he sprained his ankle last game came back in finished it off but post game rick Carlos said yeah i think it's going to be significant we don't know what that means. I would expect at least a week off. But if it came out and said that's four to five weeks for Sabonis, I would not be surprised if there was significant lig lig ligament damage. You can return on a sprained ankle, even if it's severe injury, through the last minute of the game through adrenaline only. And then it swells up and then the real reality of the injury sets in. That, that's what can happen a lot of the time. I tore a, a, a ligament in the front of my ankle. I'm not an NBA player, pretty clearly. But... I tore the, a big fat ligament, I don't know what it was called, across the front of my ankle, across the top of my foot, um, playing basketball, stayed in, hit free throws, stayed in, played the last minute of the game, and then couldn't walk the next day and was in a brace for like six months. Not, you know, I'm not saying I couldn't do anything for six months, but I couldn't do anything for weeks after that, and uh, I still have that problem in my foot now. Yet I was able to finish out that game and play it no problem. Um, yeah, interesting anecdote, Josh. Cool, good stuff. But what I'm saying is that, yeah, we don't know about Sabonis. But to get back to your original question, what is the rotation? I think it's going to be a mess. I think they'll try Goga there. I think you'll get some Isaiah Jackson starting at center. I don't think they'll start O'Shea Brissett at center. They have been very reluctant to play Brissett at center really at all this season. Brissett had that nice little run last season, which felt very fluky. He went from like a 28% three-point shooter to shooting 45% and blocking like three shots a game, which is just not anything we've seen at any point prior to that or really any point since that. I think they view him more as a power forward. Now, there will be some power forward minutes available for him, but even now with Turner out, they're going to Tory Craig and not O'Shea Brissett. So I don't think we're going to get many Brissett at center minutes, especially when there is Isaiah Jackson, who they view more favorably long-term, and there's Goga, who is a better center. I think we'll probably get like 21 minutes of Goga, 20 minutes of Jackson. You'll get some small ball. Tory Craig, you might get some small ball. Brissett in there, but I think it's going to be a continual mess while Sabonis and Turner are out. That would be that would be my expectation. But again, of course, I do not know that. But what I do know is that Bet Online wants to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue the march towards the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all of the best sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year, so there's a new updated desktop and mobile site. And go and sign up. Use our code LOCKDOWN and get a 50% welcome deposit bonus from basketball, football, the NHL, boxing, UFC, or right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of all of the fantastic offers available for 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. Yes, it does. Okay, let's look at some other questions. JP Lawrence, what is more likely to happen with Rashawn Holmes? That he gets back to top 50 or slides out of the top 100? The most likely about those two is that he gets back to top 50. I really don't see a scenario where Holmes remains outside the top 100. He is good. He is struggling. But he's played like three games in the last five weeks. I do think that it... I, I don't think it's likely that he gets into the top 50, but I think it's more likely that he gets back to the top 50 rather than remains outside of um, uh, outside the top 100. Um, okay, should I drop Nick Claxton for Marcus Morris 10-team points leagues? Yes, I would absolutely do that. Claxton's not a good points league player. There's LaMarcus Aldridge, there's Dayron Sharp. Yeah, Claxton's not the highest upside player. And yes, I would definitely do that to get um, Marcus Morris in. So, Sa says Kobe White over Goga. Well, you know, the standard fantasy um, caveat applies there. I don't know what the hell you need. Do you need a big man? Do you need a guard? I probably, 
I probably would take Kobe White, but if I needed blocks, then Goga's clearly going to be the better option there. That really just depends on what your team is. What do you trade Kyrie for? Max, I would trade Kyrie for literally any top 70 player. Kyrie's got two more games this week, and then he plays one game next week, and he plays, I think, seven games in the entirety of March. It's just not enough, right, to be a must roster, well, not a must roster because he is, but to be useful enough to deal with the ins and outs of the weeks. If your team had a one game week, you wouldn't be like starting any of those players. And that's where you're going to be with Kyrie. Is one game worth it versus four games of a top 70 player? The answer to that is obviously no. Why did the Hawks say that Capella is untouchable if a Kongu is so awesome? When did they say that he was untouchable? I don't recall them really saying that, did they? Let me know, Kamisi. I don't recall anything about that. Um, okay, let's go back to some other questions here. Who is Michael Bolton? Just use Google, man. Just Google Michael Bolton. Simple as that. Holmes for Tobias Harris. Which side wins? Again, AT Tatara? I don't know because it, fantasy is very nuanced. It's very hard for me to give individual trade comments on teams because that's not how fantasy works. Now, unless it's a really obvious one, and this one isn't because I think they're both in a similar range overall rank. But overall rank, when you get to similar ranges, means jack shit because you're talking about a guy who can be high field goal percentage, good blocks, good rebounds in Rashawn Holmes versus Tobias Harris, who's a low defensive stat, but high scorer. And it really just depends on your squad. And, and I just, I know I say this all the time, but it's a lesson that needs to be learned right across fantasy. And I'll continue to say it because you need to be understanding and having that mindset of how you approach your team versus like rank and value and overall value when it doesn't mean anything. It just doesn't mean anything. Brian says, what is Monk's rest of season outlook? Well, I don't know because the Lakers are doing dumb things. He should never have been benched and played 24 minutes a night, especially considering Avery Bradley and Trevor Ariza are the guys getting the minutes. I would just like to see them run Reeves and Monk and give them 30 minutes a night. I am holding Monk. I think he can be a top 120 player. I think the top 30, top 40 run that he had was outsized and he was shooting unbelievably with high usage and that is going to drop off when Davis returns. Henny might become a droppable player, but I think he's more of a back-end 12-team league guy versus a, a, a top guy. Hamburglar, that is true about Capella. He literally cannot be traded. So unless you're confusing whoever said that before about Capella being untouchable, the you may have misconstrued what I had said saying he cannot be traded this season. It's because he literally legally cannot be traded. Gabe Tice says, are you worried about Patrick Beverly's injury? Not really. I don't think it's anything... Um, Serious at this point, hopefully. Let's have a look. Jonathan Isaac, or I, uh, Onyeka or Kongwu in a dynasty. Well, one guy is like four or five years younger, and that's a Kongwu, and hasn't been as seriously injured with his knee as what Isaac has. So I will take Isaac, best case scenario, has the best and highest value on a per game basis. I, I don't think you'd get too much argument about that, but I don't have any faith in him being able to maintain it. And he's like four or five years older than a Kongu. So I'll take that. I'll take that extra youth that I get with um, that I get with the uh, the agent double O. Okay, let's go on. Casio Rolex, nine cat standard, Olenek or Herb Jones? Similar question. Olenek's going to be a scorer who hits threes. Jones is going to be a guy that gets by with defensive stats. It probably is Jones. Just if I'm going to go with one thing, and that's minutes upside that Jones gets. But if Zion does return, big if, if Zion does return, then Jones's minutes upside gets squished pretty significantly. Okay, who is the Bulls point guard with the highest upside? I still think it's Caruso. And then I'd say White and Desunmu. That I'd have it in that order. But you know, Caruso doesn't fit everybody. His value comes from some good assists with some really high steals. But that's the order I would have it in. But I think all of them are 12-team league options. Is Will Barton a hold in a nine-cat head-to-head league? I'm thinking about using his spot for stream. Sampawale, if that is how you pronounce your name. If Will Barton is your worst player, then dropping him to stream is absolutely the correct move. But you've got to be actually correct that he is your worst player. And I think in a lot of cases, you may be undervaluing what Barton does. But if he's legitimately your worst player, then yes, he is a player that you can drop to stream players in. That's, that's how it should work. I'll answer a lot about Goga, but let's go again. Is Goga a reliable center in fantasy? No, he is not reliable at all. I think he can be really good, but his production is game-to-game variable, and you think his minutes are going to be pretty variable game-to-game. I have no problem with taking him. All right? I think that there's a big... We're going to see a lot today, especially if Sabonis is out. We'll see what they do, and then we can make more decisions after today. But I would add Goga 
and I would see what happens in today's game really specifically. That, that's going to be the interesting question to me or one of the big things to watch, I think. What do I think you should... I don't know what you should do with Paul George, Corey. I've got no idea because I don't know anything about your... Um, I don't know anything about your team or your, your standings or anything like that. Rokas Eulis says, my colleagues are hating Wood. Why is that? Why are they not respecting Wood? You've got to respect Wood. What do you mean why that... Why, I don't know how to answer that, Rokas, but I just wanted to get a joke in there. Um, okay. I talked about the Lakers at, at length, J1LZ, about everything. I've, I've spoken about it at length. I'm not going to go back into it here. Can I give you a few players you could trade Irving for? Literally any top 70 player. Miles Bridges. Karis Levert. Christian Wood, maybe. Any top 70 player. Literally anybody. If someone was dumb enough to give you um, his teammate James Harden, they're not going to do that, but that's what you do. Shea Gildas Alexander. Like any player. CJ McCollum. Any player. Anthony Simons. Any player who is a top 70 player. Any player. Can I just... Um, I'll, or maybe I'll state it a different way. Literally any player who is a top 70 player is who I would trade Kyrie Irving for. And when I say top 70, I mean top 70 as we move forward. What, Billy says, what are my expectations for Brandon Clark and Mo Bumba when both Anderson and Carter Jr. return? Bumba and Carter, we've seen plenty of sample size of these guys playing together. So Bumba will be in that 50 to 90, 100 sort of range. He's been wildly inconsistent. Even last game, he dropped 28 in the first half and four in the second half. But that's been the story of Bumba all season. We, I think the bigger impact on Bumba is going to be if Jonathan Isaac ever unwraps himself from his mummified crypt and returns to play, then we will see an impact on Bumba because they'll have to make a decision at some point. Is it Bumba or is it Carter who starts? And I think it'll be Carter. And that'll have an impact on Bumba. But we've seen Bumba and Carter play together and we've seen what, they, what happens there. Clark and Anderson is interesting. Um, Clark, I, I think that Anderson will have some of an impact, but the way Clark is playing, he's outplaying Anderson. So while it might knock a minute or two off and, and a little bit of production, I still think Brandon Clark is a 12-team league guy. Mike Rain, why are the Lakers blaming Vogel when it's obviously a badly constructed team? Mike, let me ask you this. If you are the front office that put together the team, why would you blame yourself when you can blame somebody else? Now, Vogel is definitely not beyond criticism because he makes some horrendous decisions. Starting DeAndre Jordan, playing Avery Bradley, playing Trevor Ariza, playing Russell Westbrook at times, lineups that make no sense. These are his doing. Whether there's pressure from the front office, I don't know. But the reason that the the um, blame is getting placed onto Vogel is because the blame is getting placed onto Vogel by the player by the people who constructed the team, and they're not going to go out there and go, you know what? Can you fire our asses because we're absolutely shitful and we constructed a terrible roster? They're not going to do that. Any predictions on which Washington center will have the most value rest of season? Well, if we're going to go by what the minutes are like, it's Harold. You know, 12, 12, 24, last game, it's Harold. I don't think any of them are must roster 12 team league guys. Harold, you can hang around at the back of a 12 team roster, but realistically, you know, it's just going to be, um, it's going to be a shit show, I think, the majority of the season there, at least until an injury or a trade happens. But Bilt Bar is not a shit show. Bilt Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. You know, you get those other protein bars and it tastes like you pulled it out of a baby's diaper. Built Bar's not like that. It tastes like a candy bar. Those candy bars that are in your house, those sugary, fatty treats, why don't you just turf them? Get them out of there. Put them in a garbage bag and chuck them in the bin because Built Bar can satisfy your taste for those delicious candy bars, but also does it healthily. 130 calories in a bar, but 17 grams of protein? What is this sorcery? Get some Built Bars. If you haven't tried them, you're going to love them. Cookies and cream, that's the number one flavor. Go with that straight off. But mint is great. Orange is great. Coconut's great. Every flavor is really good. Personally, I'm not a big peanut butter brownie guy, but hey, others love peanut butter flavor. So go and grab those ones. Get to built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and save 15% off your order of Built Bar. Built.com, LOCKED15. Built Bar is built different. All right, let's go back and answer some more questions from you guys. Sweetie with a hat. Good name. With the Spurs acquiring Hernan Gomez, do you think that Thad Young is more likely mid-season trade, ca trade candidate and stash candidate for fantasy? Well, the acquisition of Hernan Gomez does not impact the Thad Young trade for for a few reasons. Uh, the only, let's actually be more accurate with that. Thad Young was not playing at all. It's not like they were relying upon Thad Young. 
right? So there wasn't like, now we've got one show, we can trade Thad Young. I don't think that is anywhere near their thought process because they literally weren't playing Young and weren't using him at all. But what it does do, the, the Spurs hadn't made any in-season trades for years and years and years. And that was always the detriment to me to, hey, let's stash Young in case he gets traded. But the fact that they acquired Hernan Gomez means, holy shit, uh, uh, in-season trades on the menu for the Spurs? Because if they are, that does increase the possibility of Young getting traded. But let me ask you this question. What team does Thad Young go to where he plays 26 minutes a night? It's going to be a contender that trades for him, uh, you would think. Where does he go that he plays those minutes? We're two or three weeks away from the trade deadline, so we're going to find out pretty soon. And he does have that upside. But we also have to remember that what he did in Chicago last year was so far removed from things that he's done at other points in his career that maybe that's just not going to be something that going to a good team, they're not going to say, hey, Thad Young, can you run our offense for us? Because that's basically what was happening in Chicago. Oh, and anchor our defense too. I'm not sure that that conversation is really happening with Thad Young where he's going to fit to that spot. So stashing is all well and good. But again, I do think that stashing so often leads to negative results. It might come out once and we all celebrate that fact. I stashed for five weeks and look at me now. But you might have stashed three other blokes or you might have stashed another guy last year or five other people in your league stashed players and they turned into absolute duds. And I think that's the, the risk that you run. Are you sacrificing wins for three weeks? It's only three weeks, so maybe you can do it. I'm just not sure I see the clear opening path for Thad to fit on a team. I would have thought Phoenix, but with Cam Johnson and Jay Crowder playing well, there's no 27-minute-a-night role there for Thad. So I'm, I'm not really sure the team that he can go to where he can establish himself in that sort of role. Sorry, that was a long um, a long, que a long answer. Can Joel Embiid win MVP this season? He looks in the best shape of his life. Can he win it? Sure. Is he going to? I don't think so. I I'm going to redo my awards again end of January, as I always do each month. And at this point, if I had to do it now, um, I reckon I'm chucking Jokic at one. Um, and Embiid might jump into number five ahead of LeBron, who I had at five last time. But I still don't... Or well, maybe he heads ahead of Durant because Durant's now injured. Um, he's playing really well, obviously. Um, but I'm not sure that he is going to win it. Maybe I'll put that up. Am I expecting Lonzo to be back in time to make an impact in nine cap playoffs? My playoffs end March 27th. I'm expecting Lonzo back middle of March, like March 15th, 16th. So I would be pretty skeptical of him having a significant impact coming back off knee surgery um, in that time frame. I'd be pretty, yeah, pretty skeptical. Is Chris Middleton a sell high? Yes, line out man. I believe he is. His assists are well up without Drew Holiday. And I think they're going to fall back off. He was in my sell high show the other day. Do you think DeJounte Murray makes the all-star team to stop by not being in the top 10 guards for fan voting? Michael, fan voting doesn't mean anything in this situation. Fan voting means only half of the value of the top two guards. That is all it means. So once, once the starters are determined, fan voting means nothing. Do I think he can make it? I didn't have him in my last all-star team because it is a little bit hard to get that final spot, whether you're going to give Doncic, Mitchell, Booker, those sort of players in that, those guard spots on the bench. To me, he was like, I think I had, what's it's a 12-man roster. I had him as like the 13th guy. He can definitely make it. I'm not sure he's going to, but the fan voting has actually zero impact on that at all. Is Kaminga a hold? Isaiah Bostic says, I think yes. I think you have to hold him at the time for now, especially considering they played today with only three games on. And until Draymond returns, let's see what he provides. That, you know, might change. He might look shit house and play 20 minutes. But now we hold him and we see where it goes. Is Boyan Bogdanovich worth keeping in a 10-team league? Jay, let me ask you a question in return. Is he your worst player? And if the answer is yes, then no, he is not worth keeping. You stream that spot. You try other guys. You get more value from that spot by streaming in. Kai Ree says, if all your players are top 90, could you argue a streaming spot isn't needed in a 12-team league? Yes, yes, I could argue that very easily. Now, Kai Ree, when you head to the fantasy playoffs... Getting bulk games in becomes more important. But you're obviously winning now without getting bulk games, without streaming guys in, if you've got an 82% win percentage, then yeah, if all your players are top 90, that probably is way more valuable than having a streaming spot, to be honest. But if you get an injury, then that's when you can open things up a little bit. Mary Mack, do I think Westbrook will pick it back up? Or is the idea he does this every year is a myth? He does tend to get better as the season goes on. That is true. But that is largely in part to those teams catering their teams and offenses around him. And I'm not sure the Lakers are going to do that. In Houston, when he started out slow, they just said, all right, screw it. Clint Capella's gone. We're just playing you, Russell Westbrook, as the center. 
and everything around that. And then uh, in Washington, again, they just catered everything towards him at the end of the season. And he started putting up better, num better numbers. So while it's not a myth that he improves, it's because of very specific conditions that he improves as the season goes on. And I, I don't trust that that's going to happen. Um, okay. Thibault or Herb Jones? AT Tatara says, Herb Jones, I think pretty clearly. Svedga Germ, do we get that garbage out of here for Claxton and Bogey? Who's Bogey? Boyan Bogdanovic? Bogdan Bogdanovic? Claxton, yeah, look, Claxton's fine, right? Uh, he's okay, but he's not a guy that I have to hold through hamstring absences. He's not that good. So if there is someone you want, I'll get rid of him. And same with Bogdanovic. Very fringe guy. Again, if they're your worst guys, you know, I drop Claxton ahead of Bogdan, but if they're your worst guys, get rid of him. Okay. Cooper, Mycel, Silverman. Who have been my top two surprise players of the season so far, both, po both positively and negative? Well, I haven't obviously got time to research this because we're just doing this live as we go. Um, positive surprise, Cole Anthony has been a really positive surprise. I could automatically go to his teammate, Wendell Carter, who I've believed in for a very long time, and he's been great. Uh, maybe DeJounte Murray has been a really big positive surprise for me this season. Negatively, um, hmm. Who's been the biggest disappointment for me? And I'm sure this is going to be names you guys can throw at me that I don't actually remember off the top of my head. But who's been the biggest disappointment um, of the season? Lillard was a pretty big disappointment. There's definitely there's definitely other names out there, isn't there? I can't think. I'm going completely blank on guys that have let me down. Sorry about that. Just going blank. Yes, Hamburglar. If Barton's your worst player, your, his spot is better. So streaming. Did I answer that already? I reckon I might have. Okay. Let's go through here. Um, it's frustrating holding Lamelo. What is happening there? No, literally, you, got, you can't do anything, right? The minutes are down for him at the moment, and his production is down. He will bounce back. Yes, it's frustrating, but it's just something that you can't get worked up about. You can't do anything about it. You can't make any moves based on it. If someone would offer you a top 20 player in a trade, you would do it, but they're just not going to do that. So, yeah, it's frustrating, but you can't do shit about it, really. Um, okay. My worst players are Wendell Carter and Jaron Jackson. Man, you are in a six-team league or your team is the best team in the world. He says, I won't have room when Anthony Davis and Draymond Green return. Do I try a two-for-one trade or hold in anticipation of more injuries? You, I would maybe try one two-for-one trade, but otherwise, yes. It is unlikely that you go the rest of the season without having other injuries. And you know, when by the time Davis and Green return, you will probably have someone else to slide into their injured reserve slots without doing anything crazy. But maybe do one two-for-one if you can actually do that. Um, Darren Fox, yep, good answer. Michael Porter Jr., also good answers. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, good answer. I think Fox is and, and MPJ are, are probably the two biggest disappointments. Um, okay. Let's go through. We'll, we'll do a couple more questions before we go here. Claxton or Shengun? Well, obviously at the moment, Axel, Claxton's producing more. Well, he's not because he's injured, but you know what I mean. Uh, Upside-wise, Shingun has clearly got a higher upside, but I think if we're talking 12-team leagues, neither of them are going to be must-roster guys, unfortunately, as much as I like them both. I just don't think they're going to be must-roster players. But if I had to pick one of those, it would probably be Shingun because I do like his upside a little bit more. Um, okay. Jay says, props for doing this live. I thought you would read these and answer them in the next video. No, man, it's all live, just straight off the top of my head. Um... Appreciate though that uh, appreciate that comment. Um, does Norm's value boost with no name? Yeah, it has to. Yeah, it, ha it has to. Yeah, Simons is picking up some slack, but he's not Damien Lillard. So Powell, it'd be interesting to see what that um, hierarchy is between McCullum, Powell, and Simons. But yes, I think it does have to boost Norman Powell with um, with Damien Lillard out. Jeremy Grant or Caruso? Jeremy Grant. Olinic or Rui? It is not Rui. The answer is never Rui. You're talking about a top 200 player or a top 100 player. Why do people think Rui Hachimura is a good fantasy player? I, it will forever baffle me. No, it is not Rui. Apologies to you, pain and sip. Um, will Levine pot push the top 10 rest of the season with Levine out, or with Lonzo out? He needs to play first, doesn't he? No, I, I don't think top. I don't think Lonzo has that. In, look, maybe he'll butt up his assist. I think top 10 is fanciful. Vachenk Chakmak. How badly did I mispronounce that, my guy? Any news for Markel Fultz? No, of course. The magic tells us jack shit. We don't know anything about Markel Fultz. And I'm going to do one more question here before we go. All right. What are the odds that Grant gets traded? Hmm. Jeremy Grant. What are the odds that Jeremy Grant gets traded? I would suggest 
that Jeremy Grant probably has a 25% chance of getting traded. I think that it should be 80% and they should be inquiring everywhere to deal with, deal him. But I'm not convinced that that is what they are going to do. That will, in fact, do it for me today. Thanks, guys, for being a part of the live show. And if you are listening later on, hope you enjoyed it. Follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are here on YouTube, on your way out, click a thumbs up on it. Hit the like, subscribe, leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.